All right, welcome back. So now that we've finished our tool settings and stock setup, created our geometry, we're ready to create our first tool path. And it's gonna be the 2D high speed dynamic mill. So that's gonna be located under your tool path, 2D high speed and dynamic mill over here. Let's go ahead and change the enter new and scene name to exercise four and hit enter. And before going through the chain options over here, let me go ahead and explain a little bit about the 2D high speed dynamic mill. Now it used to be called core mill in the previous versions and a little bit different names in previous versions as well. But for this one, they've named it dynamic mill. It's basically a really nice free flowing operation, just like the area mill that we've used in previous exercise. But instead of taking those small cuts, it actually utilizes the entire flute length of the cutting tool to achieve greater efficiency in milling. So it's still gonna be nice and free flowing motion, but it will use the entire flute length of the tool. So I'm gonna be cutting in, cutting in uh, the entire one inch depth straight from the start, okay? So that's what dynamic milling is. It's a really, really nice way. It's gonna save your tool. It's gonna save you time in machining as well. It's been very, very nice since it came out of around X3 or X4 versions in Mastercam. So over here for the machine region, this is where you tell it what machine region do you wanna machine. You select the uh, selection and make sure chain is selected and select this outer boundary. And that is why we've created this outer boundary is because I'm telling it right now, hey, I wanna machine everything on the inside of this box, but not quite. So go ahead and select okay. I told it I wanna machine everything on the inside of that box, but there's a button over here called the avoidance region. If you select it, it allows you to select a chain where you wanna avoid. And that's where I've come over here and select this outer chain of the geometry we created and select OK. So what it's going to do now, it's going to come in, it's going to machine all this area on the outside, avoiding anything on the inside, this area on the inside. And that's what I want. I just want to machine the outer profile. And also if uh, over here under machining region strategy, you want to go from outside. We're machining from outside to the inside. We're not going to machine from the inside. Inside meaning it will remain on the inside over here, leaving the walls over here open. All right, we don't wanna do that. We wanna machine from the outside all the way to the inside. And open chain extension to stock, we're gonna leave that at none. There's uh, in the next uh, exercise or the next operation that we're gonna create in the next video, we're gonna use the tangent. But for now, we're gonna leave it at none to show you what I mean. Go ahead and select okay. Come over here under tool and go ahead and select a one inch flat end mill. Now I already have filtered for it. I'm gonna select the one inch flat end mill and select okay. For the comment, I'm gonna call it 2D high speed toolpath and I'm gonna to call it dynamic mill outside. All right, now for the holder, I'm gonna keep it the same. And let's go to cut parameters and go over them real quick. So for the cutting method, we're gonna keep it at climb. For the tip compensation, leave it at tip as well. And now for the approach distance. So this is where you tell it how how much, how far do you want it to approach your part, okay? So if you select it, it'll, it'll, it'll show you a little, you know, indication of what it's talking about. Basically, I'm gonna tell it that I'm gonna approach my part half an inch away from the part towards the inside of the part. So basically, it starts out half an inch away from the part and it starts uh, drilling or starts machining towards the inside of the part. Now, you don't wanna leave it too much because then it will machine in the air for a while before it does that. And then also you can indicate where do you want it to start from. You can actually go bottom left, bottom center, top right. And this is just location wise. So in case you want it to start here, 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 or here, that's all that it's for. All right. For us, we're going to keep it bottom left. And then the first pass offset. So for the first pass, it's going to offset my chain by, I'm going to change this to a quarter of an inch. And I'll show you what that means when, it, when we see that. You can also set the first pass feed reduction as well but I'm gonna leave that off for now. And conventional feed rates, again, we don't mess around with feed rates or speeds in this tutorial because it's gonna really depend on what tool you're using and what material you're using as well. All right, for gap size as well over here, we're gonna use the 100% of the tool, so we're not gonna leave any gaps. The distance over here is really the same as the percentage of the tool diameter um, you know, that we're, that we're using, so one inch is 100% of the tool diameter. For the motion and gap size micro lift, and over here also there's a motion gap size retract. Now that's something we will use a little bit later. I'm gonna leave this alone, but you can actually use this. This is actually a very nice feature to use. I'll leave this and I'll explain it in the tutorial that I'll be using it in. So I'm gonna leave this uh, unexplained for now. For the stock to leave on walls, I'm gonna leave this to zero. 
and zero. I'm not going to create any remachining operations, so I'm going to leave zero for the stock. Now for the depth cut, I'm not machining any depth. So this is necessary when you're machining an area mill, for example, where you'd come in and machine it. Or if the diameter of the tool is just uh, and the d thickness of the part are not equal. For example, I'm machining one inch in thickness and one inch the, is the diameter of my tool. But if I have, for example, six inches over here that I need to machine, that's where you can you have to take depth cuts, especially because you can't use the entire flute length of the tool. You would come in and use a depth cut in dynamic milling. But for now, we'll leave this as off. Entry motion, we're going to leave it at helix only. So we'll come in at a helical motion and come in with a quarter of an inch radius is fine. All right. For the rest mill, this is only for whenever you leave some material in corners, for example, that your big radius of the tool can't reach the small radius corners and you have to come in with a rest material operation. We're going to leave that empty and breakthrough. We definitely want to check that and enable it and go ahead and change this to 0 0.05. So the tool is going to break a little bit past the bottom of the thickness of the part by 0 0.05. Link in parameters. Go ahead and enable clearance. I'm going to change this to 1.0. And leave everything the same, but also the depth, you need to change this to absolute negative 1.0 because that's the thickness of my part. Select apply over here. Now, one thing I want to show you real quick, go ahead and go to coolant. So I haven't showed you this in previous tutorials, but this is where you enable coolant. If you have a coolant that you can turn on and off, you can select flood and select on, and that allows you to turn on coolant. Go ahead and select apply and select OK. It's, obvious, it's not going to show you the coolant while you're verifying or anything like that, but this is where you would turn it on if you have it enabled. All right. So I'm going to place this into the top view real quick so I can explain it. Now, if you haven't, I'm going to go back to parameters. If you did not change this to 0 0.05 and 0 0.25 over here for the approach distance, then this line, this first tool path will actually be almost right on the line. And the reason why I like to always approach a little bit further distance apart, even though when it starts, it probably doesn't machine uh, right away. It doesn't start machining till maybe like right here. And at least I'm safe and I know that it's machining every bit of my part. Now you can still play around with that until it's you, you know for sure that it's machining every single part and starts machining right away. You can play around with that distance. But for now, I just wanted to make sure that it's offset a little bit so it can come in and starts machining right away. But as you can see, the toolpath comes in really nice and it starts going around first and then it starts machining each area on its own until it's finished in a very nice free flowing motion. Let's go ahead and show you in the verify in the simulation. All right, fit the screen. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and slow it down and go ahead and press play. So you're going to see, I'm going to stop it real quick. It didn't start machining really until right here. That's when it starts to dig into my part. So you can play around with that if you really want to machine. Right off the bat, you have to play around with the approach distance and make it a little smaller maybe. So go ahead and press play. And you're going to see the nice tool comes in. It's machining that entire depth and it's in a dynamic motion. This is what dynamic motion looks like. It's very free flowing. It's utilizing the entire flute length of the tool right away. It's not just to go in step each step at a time. And it's cutting it very, very nice. It's going to save your tool. It's going to save you on time. And it's uh, used in almost every other operation in MasterCam. So definitely uh, make use of it. So there you go. This concludes our first operation. In our next operation, we're going to machine the inside area of our part.